In today's video, we will build a web API for a job board app called Jobify. We will use vertical slice architecture. Most projects organize code into layers. This helps separate concerns, but can make adding a new features harder because we need to change many layers. Vertical slice architecture is different. Instead of layers, it organizes code by features. Each feature is a complete slice that spans across all layers. For example, a create job slice has an endpoint for the request, a command to process it, and the logic to make it work all in one place. Let's see how it works. Let's create a new web API project. I'm using minimal API because it makes it easy for this kind of architecture. First, let's talk about shared concerns. Some code, like the main entities or database access, aren't specific to one feature. They're used across the whole system. Let's create a folder called shared to keep shared concerns separate from the rest of the app. Inside the project, the domain folder will store everything related to how the main logic. We start with entities. The first entity represents a company that posts job offers. The second entity represents a job posted by a company. The next step is to set up data access. We will use Entity Framework Core in memory for simplicity. Let's go ahead and install it. In the data folder, let's create the data context, which are called application DB context. It has a set of job to represent jobs table and a DB set of company to represent the company's table. We use the onModelCreating method to control how entities are mapped to the database tables. This method will scan the project and look for any classes that implement high entity type configuration and automatically apply their configurations. The configuration folder will store all the configuration classes for our entities. So we will start with the job configuration class to define the rules for the job entity. The title property is required and can be up to 100 characters. The description property is also required and the application link property is required with a maximum length of 500 characters. Next, we will create the company configuration class to define the rules for the company entity. To complete the setup of the data access, we need to register the DB context with the dependency injection container. This is done in the program.cs file by calling the add DB context method on the services property. With the data access setup, we can start building features. We will begin by creating a folder called features. Inside it, we will create a companies folder to organize all features related to companies. Then within the companies folder, we will add a create company folder to add everything for the create a company feature. Before jumping into implementing a slice, let's talk about a useful pattern called Reaper. This pattern organizes our web API code into three components. The request holds the data sent by the client. The endpoint processes the request, often delegated the works to the handler, using mediator, for instance, and returns a response to the client. This approach works well with minimal API. Now let's see it in action. We will create a company request, a simple data transfer object with field like name and email for creating a company. Next, we create the create company endpoint class. Since we're using minimal API, this class is static and adds the endpoint as an extension to I endpoint route builder. The endpoint handles a post request to the slash companies route. 
and takes a company request as input. To keep the handpoint clean, we will delegate the business logic to a handler using Mediate R. Let's install Mediate R. While it's not mandatory, it helps separate the handpoint from the business logic. Next, we create a create company command, which has a name and an email. Back in the handpoint, we will create an instance of this command using the request data. Then we will use Mediate R to send the command to the handler for processing. After the command is processed, we will return a 201 created HTTP status along with the ID of the new company. Now we will implement the create company handler. It takes a DB context to save the data. Inside the handler, we create a new company entity using the command data, add it to the database, and return the new company's ID. We can improve this feature with validation using Fluent Validation. First, we install the Fluent Validation and Fluent Validation Dependency Injection Extensions. Then, we will create a validator class for the command. The name must not be empty, and the email must be a valid email address. To make sure the validation happens before the command reaches the handler, we will use a mediate R feature called pipeline behavior. In the shared folder, I created a behavior folder and add a class called validator behavior. This class validates the request and throw a validation exception if there are any errors. Finally, in program.cs, we will register the pipeline behavior, validators, and handlers to complete the setup. Now that our first slice is ready, let's test it. We will send a post request to slash companies with a valid name and email. If everything works, we should get a 201 created status and the response will include the ID of the new company. To check the validation, I will try posting a company with an invalid email. As expected, we get a validation exception error. With one more feature done, I followed the same step of screen to create another feature, create job. After that, I added a get jobs feature. This one was a bit different because it's a query. Instead of just an endpoint and a handler, I also added a query and a response. The last step is to connect all these endpoints to the API, which I will do in the program.cs file. For testing, we will focus on integration testing. This allows us to test an entire feature or slice end to end. We will start by creating a new project called jobify.integrationTest. This project should reference the API. To simulate HTTP requests during testing, we will use the Microsoft.asp.net core.mvc.testing package. This allows us to test our API endpoint as if they were being called by a real client. For testing, we don't want to depend on a real database. Instead, we will use Entity Framework Core in memory. This makes it easy to test database operation without setting an actual database. We will also install Fluent Assertion to make our test assertion more readable and expressive. To make our API test friendly, 
we will modify the program.cs file in the API project. We will add the following code. This change allows the testing environment to access and interact with the program.cs class. Next, we will set up a Jobify Web Application Factory class in the integration test project. This class will extend Web Application Factory to configure and launch the API for testing. Next, we override the configure web host method to customize the application setup for testing. Here is what the code looks like. We remove the existing DB context configuration. Then we had an in-memory database for testing. Finally, in the same configure web host method, we make sure the environment is set to development. Let's write our first integration test to check if the create company feature works correctly. We will create a new test class called create company test. This setup ensures the test uses the applications factory for simulating HTTP requests. Now we will add a test method to verify that creating a company works as expected. In the arrange part, we create an HTTP client with a valid request. In the act part, we send a post request to slash companies endpoint. Once we get a response, we check that the response is successful and returns the correct HTTP status code. To confirm the test works, we can add a breakpoint inside the endpoint and debug the test. When we run the test, you will see that it successfully hits the endpoint. This checks the entire flow of the create company slice. Let's write an integration test to ensure that the get jobs feature works correctly. We will create a test class called get job test. We had a test method to check if the endpoint is working correctly. We send a get request to slash job endpoint. Then we make sure the response status code is 200 OK. Let's run the test. And as you can see, it works. You might be asking, which is better, vertical slice architecture or layered architecture like clean architecture? It depends. I prefer vertical slice architecture because it's simple and great for starting a new project. But sometimes I switch to a layered approach when I need to reuse code. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one where I explain clean architecture. This video end here and see you next time.